Olympism is a philosophy of life that glorifies and combines the qualities of body, mind and will. It is based on the joy of effort, the educational value of a good example, social responsibility and respect for fundamental ethical principles. The goal is to build a peaceful and better world by educating youth through the practice of sport without discrimination of any kind and in the Olympic spirit of friendship, solidarity and fair play. Join us in blending sport with culture and education through Indian Olympic Education Committee at International Webinar on the 11th and the 12th of June with leading speakers to move forward with Olympism and Olympic education in the 21st century. Brought to you live and exclusive on One Place Sports Channel. It's organized by the Indian Olympic Education Committee, uh, as we know, and we've got a fantastic, you know, uh, series of panel discussions that will follow. Uh, but before much ado, let me first introduce who all are going to be there uh, in our inaugural session. Uh, we are very pleased to announce that the Honorable Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports, uh, Mr. Kiran Rijiju, is, is, has already joined us. Uh, I'll be introducing him very shortly. We've also got the President of the Indian Olympic Association, Dr. Narendra Dhruv Patra, who's there and you know he needs no further introduction. The Commissioner of Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangathan, Mr. Santosh K. Mal uh, is also in the inaugural session. And over the next couple of days, we've got several distinguished Olympic dignitaries, as, as uh, has already been, uh, you know, the, the slide came and you saw that this webinar will be broadcast live today and tomorrow on One Place Sports uh, on the following platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Hello. So the footprint of the seminar is going virtually across the globe. And... Uh, as I understand it, we've got already some 10,000, 11,000, uh, you know, uh, uh, delegates already in. So before, before uh, you know, we get anywhere further on this, uh, let me introduce the Honorable Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports in India, Mr. Kirindu, who has been dynamic ever since he's taken up this post. He's... His uh, in, intent in making India a sporting nation has been evident to anybody who follows sports uh, in this country and perhaps even in the world. So, uh, I uh, it's, it's it's what he says here is obviously going to carry a lot of weight given uh, India's aspirations and ambitions uh, in uh, in the in the forthcoming in this year itself, the next couple of years, uh, and obviously he's working in conjunction with the. Indian Olympic Association and Dr. Narendra Dhruv Batra. So it's a, it's a, what I would call, a, you know, a, a terrific combination that is in place. But uh, let me hand over the baton, so to speak, to Mr. Prashant Kushwaha, Chairman of the Olympic Education and Other Academic Matters Related Committee, Indian Olympic Association, uh, to take it further, introduce the minister and take it from there. Mr. Prashant Kushwaha. Morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Indian Olympic Education and Education Committee, I welcome Mr. Kiran Rijuji, Minister for Sports and Youth Welfare, Government of India. Uh, uh, as everybody knows, is Mr. Riju has just whenever he has taken a very good lead as becoming a Minister of Sports of India. All the country is seeing his work and work and process, like in form of Hello India, in form of Kashmir. Uh, there is a game organized by the Hello India. Hello India School Games, Hello India University Games, and Fit India. These these are some of the great achievements what he has taken up and followed in a uh, better process. On behalf of Olympic Education Committee, uh, we welcome him on the board. I I uh, I am uh, I also welcome Dr. Narendra Batra, who is president of Olympic Association, and thank him for giving a, giving chance to our committee to prove ourselves in the process of Olympic Education. Dr. Armo Gopuram is with us. But Mr. Santosh Kumar, Commissioner KV is with us. Mr. DK Singh is with us. Mr. Uh, Ovezi from Iran is with us. Mr. Richard is with us. I, I welcome everybody on behalf of him. The Olympic education is what is like, I would like to explain because it's a new matter. 
Olympics is going on. Olympics only ten thousand people play, odd people. But for that, it takes four years and lakhs of people work for it and to go there. Olympic education is a committee which is made by the Olympic uh, Olympic chapter, which has been taking care for all the all the education part, all the backstage of it, the field, uh, except from the field, whatever is done to the players, how they will be educated, like Nada, Wada, what are their basic problems, <coughs> how they they should be joined. What is the basic need of them? Jobs, etc., are taken care by the Olympic Education Committee. So uh, we have we have doing this uh, this seminar with 18 foreign participants in it all over the world, 18 countries, uh, National Olympic Association directors and people required for the education related to the Olympics are joined uh, will be joining in this two days. With two days, we will be we will be moving and pushing the thing and making a proper portfolio and give it to the. Olympic Association to the government. From last 15 days, we have done the survey, and the survey was uh, done with all the sports person, the federation, and association. And three requests, which came to me as a chairman, I am putting towards Mr. Batra and uh, uh, the minister. Number one, Olympic education should be added in the uh, and the uh, in the uh, syllabus of all the all the. Uh, all the like CBSC, ICSC, IGSC. It is a request from your R and K. You can just push it. Olympic education there. Number two, Indian Olympic Museum is missing. Olympic everywhere you go, there are museums. So we request you. So with uh, with the request of Mr. Batra, that Olympic Museum should be taken care and it should be pushed in future. Uh, government of uh, Government of India is running a charity scheme. In that we request you. To push uh, Olympic, Olympic this thing because it's an academy. All Olympic orientation and game goes through it, so that can be added in it. These are the three requests from our end, and we will come up with all the proposal as lockdown and everything goes on. Thank you, sir. Let me take this uh, forward to the honourable sports minister. We all know that when he took over, uh, there was you know this great ambition to try and straddle many hurdles. And overcome them and make India into a sporting nation. We've had some terrific schemes that have come on behalf of the government and at the initiative of the sports minister himself, like Kelo India, etc. So, can may I request the sports minister to briefly spell out what his vision is going wow. ahead? Uh, you know, in Olympism, Olympic education, how he sees India's progress in the sporting world, so to speak, and how he thinks uh, India can become a sporting nation. The honourable minister. Uh, thank you, Izaz Memanji, and uh, all the um, uh, respected guests uh, joined in this uh, particular important session across the globe. Uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Nar Narendra Batraji. He is the Indian Olympic Association president, and I'm happy that uh, Mr. Santosh Mal, who is a very enthusiastic uh, senior IS officer, uh, presently commissioner for the Kendriya. Vidyalaya Sangathan is also with us, and of course we have very important people joined here: Dr. Richard Young, Muhammad Reza Ovesi, Dr. D K Singh, Professor Arumugam, uh, Mr. Prashant Kushwa, and Kamlesh Nanavati ji, and many more people. I have got a paper. With, I was very impressed with the uh, list of participation. In these two days, a uh, very important international webinar on Olympism and Olympic education in the 21st century. Uh, personally, I'm very excited to see such things taking place. You know, when we talk about a movement, a global movement, India has to be part of that movement. India has to be proactive in that movement. We are one sixth of the humanity. If any movement has to succeed, India has to succeed at the same time. So I personally feel that the Olympic movement has to get, uh, get deep rooted in Indian society. When we talk about education, I feel that not only for the students, not only as a subject uh, for a section of people, but the society as a whole must understand the value and the spirit of Olympic movement. From very childhood, I had been having a, a great, uh, you know, this fantasy about the Olympic movement. 
I have shared my thoughts in many occasions uh, in my ministry. When I meet many people, I keep on sharing this thing that how much Olympic means to me and how much Olympic actually means to the humanity. Olympic movement brings a great a spirit of unity. It, it sends across such a beautiful messages. So it's not only sports. It's actually coming together of the, the humanity to celebrate our existence, our spirit, our unity. So through Olympics, we can achieve many things. Over the past few years, I have seen that uh, it has commercialized and uh, Olympic movement has become a very stiff competition and every nation is trying to uh, get on top of it. So yeah, actually, there's nothing wrong in it. It's good. You must have that kind of competition to make Olympic much more attractive. So first of all, I must compliment the Indian Olympic Association, Dr. Batra and his team. So on this, on the occasion of 32nd Olympiad, though this 32nd Olympiad is postponed by one year. So during this time, this webinar is being organized and the efforts are being put to create the Olympism and Olympic education in our society. I'm very happy to also share that uh, we have already announced our National Sports Education Board. Now it is in a formation yeah. stage. I have constituted a very high level committee. Yes, yes. And this committee is under discussion how to bring National Sports Education Board into a shape. So my point is very clear what my prime minister has already envisaged and my other colleagues, uh, especially the minister for the uh, HRD, Human Resource Development, which looks after the education. So the new education policy of India is also going to have sports as, as a part of the education, not, not sports, not as a extracurricular activities. I always believe in that. Education is what? Sports is what? It's same. Sports is also an education. So sports cannot be extracurricular activities. Thereby, sports cannot be treated as an optional subject. Sports is part of the education. If you play sports, you don't play sports later on. It's different thing. But sports as part of education has to be accepted by all. So the new education policy, I cannot make an announcement right now because education policy, the new education policy of India is not officially declared yet, but it is almost in a uh, final shape. So my ministry has already pushed very strongly uh, during our interaction and my participation in the national committee to make sports as part, integral part of the education uh, system in India. So along with that, our um, effort to establish National Sports Education Board, I would like to make a commitment that uh, very soon I will uh, make sure that the committee members of the National Sports Education Board to sit with the Indian Olympic Association team led by Dr. Batra and discuss about how to integrate Olympism and Olympic education into our <coughs> outlook, into the whole approach. So that understanding will have to be there. So I will ensure, and I'm uh, happy to, to make this um, intention very clear here, that I will take it forward. This uh, Olympic education is something which is something the society has to understand. The society has to know it. When I was without television, without newspaper, living in a far corner in northeastern part of India, I could feel the spirit and strength of Olympic movement. Why not everybody, especially people in the city? They should understand. Olympic is maybe, as mentioned, 10,000 players come together and another 15,000 officials backing. It's not that. The whole nation, the whole global community comes together. It's a, it's a movement for the humanity, all of us. So I'm very happy. I have so many things to share, but I know... Uh, uh, I will not go on, but today I feel very happy that I'm being invited. So once again, I would like to inform uh, my uh, friends in the Indian Olympic Association and everybody 
that government of india will be always proactive in whatever steps and whatever decisions you take our effort is to make india a great sporting nation to create india a sporting nation we have taken various steps all those important steps are i strongly believe are towards creating a sports culture in india without creating a sports culture we will not be able to understand the olympic movement olympic movement and sports culture this is completely interlinked that is why as we talk about uh, creating a sports culture in india and I, as i mentioned india being a large country our participation and our achievement in olympic also should have a higher position personally uh, india has been part of the olympic movement india has been participating in uh, olympics and um, especially after 1928 amsterdam uh, olympics where india won the first time the olympic gold medal in hockey since then india has been uh, regularly there but personally i am not satisfied with india's performance in the olympics that is because we did, did not have that kind of policy from the government or that kind of movement in indian society to make sports as a culture in daily way of life so now i have taken this drive i am working very hard with the indian olympic association and all the sports federations to ensure that we take concrete step to ensure that the indian society becomes a very vibrant society in creating india a sporting society so becoming the sporting powerhouse first you will have to have a sporting culture in the society's mindset i'm very very happy that so many eminent people are here rather i would like to hear from them and then also request uh, dr batra that please get me the gist of the entire discussion which i can take it into other stride of the government's policy because without the backing of the government i know it will be very difficult to implement whatever important discussions and uh, decisions you take so you ha you have my commitment and also i want to inform that as mentioned by uh, mr prashant kushwa about the olympic museum <clears throat> and i personally feel that uh, olympic museum is uh, i think a very important treasure we need to have in every country and a country like india we have a good legacy we must have that so maybe after this covid 19 lockdown everything is over i hope things become normal as soon as possible we will discuss about having a beautiful worthy of calling it olympic museum maybe in delhi maybe in, in our national stadium because our jn stadium is going to be over hold through uh, uh, some process so maybe national stadium or wherever it is suitable we will have uh, i'm i'm very keen to have a um, olympic museum in india and at the same time uh, i would also uh, hope that this uh, covid 19 has uh, put a stand still on the entire sporting activities i would like to ensure that at least we we take some steps in couple of mon months time i have declared in one of my interview also so i would like to uh, uh, ask dr batra ji and uh, uh, some relevant people that let us have uh, some sporting events symbolically in couples of m m months time i will talk to some of the broadcasters also maybe star sports doordarshan or some uh, group because we are not going to have spectators in the stadium so in the absence of spectators we will have to work out mechanism for how to broadcast the event through live streaming live telecast so we will have to make it interesting and <clears throat> we have to learn that um, sports without uh, spectator also can be interesting so let us uh, work on that also because that will give lots of confidence to the people uh, on the one side we have to give top priority to our health and safety on the other side the activity must go on uh, we can uh, you know be defeated by the corona virus we have to defeat 
the virus. So we will have to have uh, activities go on without compromising the protocols for safety and security. So we will have to take a very balanced step, middle path, and we will have to move on. We can't um, just uh, uh, be talking and planning all the time. We have to get on the ground. We need to start. And I also hope that the Tokyo 2021, as being postponed by one year, will be worked out nicely. My message to the International Olympic Council and the, all the National uh, Olympic uh, bodies that please work out a proper mechanism. I know the International Olympic Council is working out that we can't think about postponing one more time. It, it, it is unthinkable. So within that uh, existing uh, time frame, which we have, 2021, July 23rd, uh, the same Olympic 32nd Olympiad has to begin and has to be carried forward in a very uh, different way, which we have not ventured into that territory yet. Very diff difficult, challenging circumstances. But as a, as a human being has this undaunted spirit, I know we will overcome the challenge. So thank you for inviting me to this important, uh, very, very uh, in this webinar of Olympism and Olympic education, and also to understand the value of the Olympic movement and its impact on the humanity. We will have to understand that. Everybody must know what is Olympic. I can feel the spirit of Olympic. I want every Indian to feel it. In fact, every human being to feel it. The, the, there is nothing bigger even than the Olympic on this planet Earth. Olympic is the largest any kind of event for the human being. That we have to understand. And the value of it, what it brings along, that we have to understand. And for that, I think this kind of uh, international webinar, these are very important. And I'm sure all those people who are joining here uh, will have a very valuable contribution and sharing of your experiences, your ideas, your knowledge, and share it amongst yourself. And I had um, urged earlier that um, once a concrete form of uh, structured advice or recommendations come to India, to my government, to, to me as a sports minister, I will definitely uh, ensure that we align with each other. I'm always, as a part of the team, always there, proactive. I will always be ready to be part of the team. So my best wishes to the entire team, the Indian Olympic Association, and all our friends. I'm told 19 countries have joined. So this is a wonderful, uh, pleasant moment that we, despite having this COVID-19 difficulties, we are able to use technology and join with each other and carry forward the spirit of Olympics. We move together. We are united. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Uh, that was a, you know, that was that spelled out actually very astutely. You laid out a short-term plan in this post-COVID era. What what uh, the Indian Olympic Association could do, and also uh, you've given us a sneak peek into the long-term vision of what your ministry and the government is thinking about. You know, creating this sports culture, which can help us become uh, a formidable force in the world of sports. But uh, uh, I think you know, in a way, you've also thrown the gauntlet at the man who. You know, you collaborate with uh, so so closely, and that is the president of the Indian Olympic Association, Dr. Narendra Dhruv Batra. So I must now toss the ball to him, and let's hear what he has, uh, what plans he has to make uh, India into a sporting nation. Because uh, a, a few days back, we were in a session together, and he is so confident that in the by 2028, India should be in the top ten in the Olympics, which would be fantastic. So let us hear from Dr. Narendra Batra how he sees the immediate future and gives us an insight into his vision going ahead. Thank you, Ajay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome our Honorable Minister Shri Kiran Rijiju to uh, spare his time and join us on this function, the seminar which we are having for two days. Just a few words about Honorable Minister. See, I have been actively involved with sports at national level since 2009. 
and I think maybe I've dealt with uh, six sports ministers till now. It's not that I'm saying good or bad about anyone, but the good thing about our Honorable Minister Shri Kiran Riju is that whenever we meet him, he puts us so much at ease that it's always a pleasure communicating with him. He does not treat you like a president of an association, he treats you like a friend. And in discussions, I think whenever you leave or get up, you take one or two good things from him. And I think that's one of the reasons why you will see the sporting activity, everything improving from grassroots level. It's, it's the pyramid structure which actually was missing in India. I would say the credit should go to him for creating that by starting our Kelo India games, youth games, university games. I think university games were dead maybe 30 years ago. The school games were dead maybe again 30, 40 years ago. He's revived everything. When I say the pyramid structure has actually started and when Honorable Minister's vision that we should be in the top 10 in medals in 2028, 20, and the way I see the athletes and the programs going up, I honestly don't have doubts why should not we should not aim and not try to be there in 2028 at the top 10 position in medal levels. So, Honorable Minister, thank you very much for your support, which you, which always you are giving, and which we are so, I would say, uh, it's a privilege and it's a good luck that you happen to be our minister and we are getting so much support from you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I'd like to thank Prashant Kushwaha, Chair of our Olympic Education and Academies Committee for taking this initiative at such short notice. So, keep it up, Prashant. You are one of the younger lots in which we see the future of Olympic movement and Olympics in India. So we are the ones who have to retire in the next five, six, seven years. And you are the young people who have to take control. Uh, then I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Reza Oisi, who is the Director of Education from Iran, who is also on the panel to speak today. Mr. Richard Young from New Zealand. So welcome on this program. Professor Arumugam, welcome on the program. And Dr. D.K. Singh, who are also going to be speaking today. And one person, Mr. Ayaz Memon, who is moderating, I believe, today. So, Mr. Ayaz Memon is one person who is an encyclopedia and dictionary on sports. It's always a pleasure to meet him, and you always carry something back from him. You discuss with him on any sport, and he'll have a knowledge. Two things I'd like to just address first. Prashant, you mentioned about Olympic Museum. Yes, this was planned earlier in Major Dhyanchand National Stadium, but I think the decision is uh, a bit delayed. But yes, there is definitely a project within Government of India to start an Olympic museum. Now, all the Honorable Minister said that it could be National Stadium or Jawaharlal. So we'll take it up further and see how we do it and where we do it. So this uh, effort will go on. Honorable Men Men Minister mentioned about integrating uh, Olympic uh, education program and sports. So I'll be certainly taking it up with you, on, uh, Honorable Sir. And the bullet points you have requested, I'll certainly be preparing and sharing a note with you. We all know that uh, education is a state subject. So we'll have to make great efforts with the state governments also that they should in some way get this into the program and the system to see how we uh, take it up further. Honorable Sir, you requested about starting some sporting activity later in the year. We have lined up certain events, uh, the ones which are not on physical contact and ones which is there some contact, but it all depends upon how the present uh, pandemic uh, carries on, so all those permissions will be based on all uh, those things. I can tell you about one thing that hockey national championships are being kept for either October, November or December, provided the uh, situation at that time permits. So there are events which are lined up. So we'll see how it goes and how it comes. I'll just briefly go on the today's program without taking much of your time that Olympic education is an innovative educational activity enjoying international recognition. Uh, today, Olympic education programs are implemented in many countries around the world, a trend that has been increasing in the past 10 to 15 years. Olympic education is mostly promoted through education at all levels. On a smaller scale, its practice is also extended to sports organizations, social institutions, and camps. The way in which it is integrated with education varies from country to country, but it is achieved in most cases through physical education, to other courses, but also as an autonomous course. For its implementation, special education resources have been developed in most countries. Training is provided to the teachers who implemented these programs, but no extensive formal evaluation has been performed. 
so i think we need to have some more uh, uh, evaluation levels happening the organization that assisted in the implementation of olympic education program were mostly national olympic academies which prashant has now we are going to uh, have these academies enrolled in the, your panel national olympic committees that's us and to a lesser extent government agencies non governmental organizations sports associations sponsors and social institutions so we have to make a beginning in india i'm talking about in all these sectors and all these levels the training and training and information of organizations that participate in the program implementation is considered an essential aspect the creation of an olympic education program at world level will help individual countries considerably to integrate in the best possible way olympic education in their own system that's what we are talking about how to get it integrated at our school levels and other places in conclusion olympic education programs are growing into an important activity with a strong impact on a range of permanent aspects of global education the schools especially the schools should draw upon this wealth of knowledge experience and representation that students of all ages bring from their life their family the environment in which olympic education programs achieve this objective that instead of teaching students ready made knowledge they integrate them into a knowledge generation process enabling them to understand learning structures finding ways of integrating the innovations offered by olympic education programs in education will require mobilization and extending institutional provisions to allow their inclusion in country school system and that's where honorable minister started and said that he will be listening to us and definitely hand holding us the government will hand hold us to take it up at schools level at various places so thank you honorable minister for giving us a heads up on this uh, program so we'll certainly be getting in touch with you in the times to come so thank you very much from my side and thank you honorable minister for joining us in this program today thank you, thank you very much uh, dr batra i hope uh, that you and the honorable minister become the jodi number 1 for india where sport is concerned we are all looking forward to this you know this phase of excellence that we all desire we've all been waiting for now uh, we we need to head into the seminar or the webinar by 11 o'clock so i would request my other panelists to try and be as succinct as brief as possible because then we get to hear everybody uh, and try and restrict it to about 2 minutes each without further ado let me move on to professor arumugam s who is the president indian association of sports medicine that is iasm director center for sports science a few words from you professor arumugam honorable minister of youth affairs and sports government of india shri kiran rijiju president of indian olympic association dr narinder dhruv batra chairman olympic education committee mr prashant kuswaha dignitaries on the virtual dais of today's inaugural session and dear friends very good morning to all of you on my capacity as the president of the indian association of sports medicine and the director of center for sports science sri ramachandra institute of higher education and research shri her chennai i express my sincere gratitude to the organizers for this wonderful opportunity to be amongst you on this inaugural session of the international webinar on olympism and olympic education in the 21st century the concept of olympism is that it promotes good way of life by blending sports with culture education and international cooperation olympism utilizes the beauty and power of sports for the harmonious development of human kind to create a peaceful society which will conserve human dignity with the spirit of friendship solidarity and fair play olympic education is an any concept which embraces two interactive roles that of social education and sports education olympic education aims to disseminate a value based curriculum that will shape the development of child and youth character it is mainly based on the principles propagated by perry do obertin the founding father of the modern olympic games which includes the harmonious development of body and mind the striving for human perfection in sport academic studies and daily life being a light and role model for the younger generation not only in sport but also in other areas of life and finally the knowledge about olympic games itself as the second most populous country in the world india has progressed excellently well in various spheres including science education healthcare and economy and is well on the way to become a superpower 
Our probes in sports and fitness are also growing fast thanks to the exemplary initiatives like Kelo India and Fit India by our government. It is agreed by all of us that sports needs to be needs the help of science to take us to the next level and compete with the top universities in the top countries in the world. This had prompted us to build the Center for Sports Science at Steger University in Chennai. We have strived hard to bring the best in sports medicine and sports science to our country and believe in making a positive change in sporting ecosystem by joining hands with all the stakeholders of the Indian sports scenario, including the central and state government, sports federations, NGOs, and sports related organizations. Today, the Center for Sports Science provides the world-class sports science and sports medicine services to our athletes at the comfort of our own homeland. CSS has also launched many of first of its kind bespoke sports education programs on par with international standards, including the MD sports medicine for the doctors and bachelors in sports and exercise science course for the allied sports scientists. CSS will be launching international standard master level programs in sports psychology and sports physiotherapy this year in collaboration with some leading foreign universities in UK and Australia. We will be launching many online courses as uh, UGC has permitted our senior university to do so because of its grade one university status. Apart from this, CSS regularly conducts international conferences workshop and of late webinars in sports medicine and sports science with the eminent international and national experts offering their wisdom and rich experience to our students, coaches and support staff. We will extend our full support to the education committee of the Indian Olympic Association in this new endeavor. All these have made our steep resolve to help the Indian sports even stronger and we have pledged to put our full efforts in this direction single-mindedly. I strongly believe that the day is not far when see our Indian yeah, director to like. the top 10 place in medal table. With these few words, I wish the international webinar a grand success and thank you for your attention. Let's all stay safe and overcome the COVID crisis together so that the beauty of sports can start charming the world again. Jai Hind. Thank you, Professor Armugam. Let me move on very swiftly to Dr. D.K. Singh, President-elect, Roundtable International uh, with a request, Dr. D.K. Singh, to try and keep your address as brief as possible. We've got a few more speakers there and we have to get into the international session at 11 o'clock sharp. Thank you very much. Dr. D.K. Singh. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Singh, yes, we can hear you now. Uh, sorry, some technical problem. Uh, through, uh, thank you, Aya, sir. Um, through uh, Mr. Youth and Sports and Narin, sir, I represent Roundtable International and as well as Roundtable India here. As a, we are a youth organization, charitable organization. We are presenting in at least uh, uh, five, five, more than six more than countries worldwide. And uh, we, being a youth organization, uh, in India, we are, uh, mm -hmm. as a charitable organization, we are doing lots of uh, charitable projects. And last 20 years, we are building schools, more than 3,000 schools we built across the India. And mostly the schools are in rural uh, uh, areas. And almost 7.28 uh, million students, uh, underprivileged students, they are uh, uh, benefited with the schools. So uh, as, as a sports, I can see Mr. Spores he he as a he is a visionary person and he did a lots of uh, uh, job and lots of uh, thought process to to uh, promote uh, sports in in uh, rural india so being a uh, uh, being a young and being a young association we urge and we request mr sports and narin sir uh, we we would like to offer our services our associations to merge or or associate to to sport and um, uh, develop uh, to to rural india sports and where uh, where uh, like like mr sports says like we as a india we can uh, we are uh, oh, yes. around, the year, around the year we are looking for the good sports and um, good sports spirit uh, students or or uh, kids uh, I think uh, in India, the, the main, uh, if, if you see main uh, uh, ch uh, main talent are sitting in the rural India. 
so i like to request mr sports and uh, mr youth and narendra sir to to you know uh, we can have some some kind of collaboration and develop the thought process where student uh, where the, the students those who are studying in our schools charitable schools uh, we can uh, do some some projects with uh, uh, to develop their uh, sports uh, skills so thank you ayar sir thank you thank you so much dr singh for your you know keeping it as brief as possible let me move on to mohammad reza oic director of education center noa of iran he is one of the distinguished oic's guests so over to you mohammad reza oic sir hello uh, indian olympic association president dear friends hello thank you uh, to invite me to participate in international webinar olympics and olympic education i present to you the brief report of uh, noa of islamic republic of iran activity uh, today uh, the coronavirus has made a lot of problem for countries economic sport activity transport and the important thing olympic games uh, fortunately covid-19 couldn't stop scientific and educational activity uh this international webinar can help the iu iuc to achieve its goals the national olympic academy of uh, islamic republic of iran uh, was inaugurated by dr jakrok in 2002 the objective of uh, noa is the same of uh, the other noa noa to promote to fundamental goals of olympics and familiar the society with the goals and ideas of olympic movement to provide the required facility and training educational research and sport medical services to prepare national elite athletes for participation in olympic asian regional and islamic solidarity games to organize educational seminars and scientific symposium on national and international level to organize cultural and all art program and hold a sport book <coughs> or photo exhibition uh, our academy uh, is a multi purpose organization therefore its activities divided to three group educational cultural and training uh, we are holding uh, webinars in the field sports psychology psychology sport medicine physical fitness and uh, olympic value education education program for teachers athletes and and coaches and uh, we have uh, specific courses for sport athletes between 13 to 15 years old who have a chance to participate, participate in uh, olympic olympic games uh now uh, we say we are ready to have cooperation with countries Uh, who interested to organize and implement science and education educational program uh, finally i want to uh, to uh, to organizer of this webinar and also my friend uh, niraj i hope uh, one day will come to everyone will be an olympic ambassador thank you very much thank you thank you so much uh, ovesh sahab uh, i'll move on swiftly now to dr richard young vice president transition park inc director of olympic improving athlete and team performance new zealand so can we have your views in as brief a time as possible we've still got a couple of speakers more thank you so much sure thank you <clears throat> i guess thank you very much for the invitation um thank you for the inspiring words too from the minister uh rijiju and and uh, the president as well those are fantastic words to hear that other countries need to hear as well um My work is in the area of values, Olympic values, and and how they translate from sport and into sport and into business. And and um, so I was with a Canadian team, and they, you can tell I don't have a New Zealand accent. Um, and, um, and then with the British team, and then with the New Zealand team. And um, but in 1996, I went to the IOA, the International Olympic Academy in in Olympia, where Niraj went as well. Um, and then I was invited back as a teacher in 1997. Um, I met my wife there, who was there for Britain, and um, and so we've been living in New Zealand now. But what I noticed, even after a lot of years of competing, 
and coaching. So I, uh, I was at the Olympics in 88 and then coached in 96, was the Olympic values were so important and they hadn't been taught to athletes and coaches. So I'd never experienced those clear Olympic values and Olympism for my years in sport and the coaches that I'd worked with. Before. So the work I do now is, is in the areas of behaviors and strategy and values, translating Olympic values into business, into sport, and aligning values with, with behavior. So the highest performers and the repeat medalists, and a lot of business and a lot of struggling kids in sport, they don't align. So there's a value and there's a behavior down here. And, and like the minister said, the value of sport, uh, there's a massive impact on humanity. And living in New Zealand, we the other side of the coronavirus, and, and but it feels like being the only country at the Olympics, it's not really a festival when there's only one there. Um, and we know we're part of a global community. And, and so hopefully this is a, a hope giving piece where uh, New Zealand has proven we can get out of this. And we all need to be working together. Um, sport is just starting up here for the first time. So there's a rugby game on Saturday. Um, rugby is the most popular. Um, and, uh, and it's probably going to be one of the biggest events watched in the in the world. It's the only spectator event in the whole world. And, and the world needs sport. And now more than ever, while we're just coming out of this coronavirus, we need the values of the Olympic movement, the deeper values, not the performance, but the deeper values, and, and also the coming together as a, as a global community. So um, I'm really uh, privileged to be here. Uh, it's great to meet the other speakers, and it's a fantastic lineup over the next couple of days. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Young. Uh, it's, it's been so heartening to know how New Zealand has conquered the COVID threat uh, and is showing up to the rest of the world. But uh, uh, of that later, let me now move on to our next speaker, and that is Sri Santosh Kumar Mal, IAS Commissioner, Kendriya Vidyale Sangatan. Uh, without, I hope he's, uh, he's on the screen already. <coughs> yes, he's there. Santosh Kumar Malsi. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Menon. Uh, uh, it is a great privilege to be on this uh, forum. Uh, Honorable Minister, sir, uh, Dr. <coughs> uh, Dr. Young, Dr. Anmugam, uh, Dr. Oesi, Prashanji, DK Singhji, and all the dignitaries uh, across the globe who have uh, joined, all the sports lovers who have joined. A very good morning and namaskar to you all. Uh, there, is, uh, there can be no less emphasis on the synergy between Olympism and education, as very uh, aptly highlighted by Honorable Minister, sir. And uh, I'm very uh, proud to tell this August gathering that uh, Kendra Vidyale Sangathan is supposed to be a pace-setting organization as far as uh, policies related to education and sports are concerned for Government of India. And uh, in the month of August uh, 2017, uh, we had launched a fitness report card. Uh, Honorable Minister HRD that time had launched this fitness report card, uh, which, which for the last two years, uh, last three years rather now, uh, this is being provided to all the students, about 1.3 million students in Kendra Vidyalaya Sangathan uh, uh, with the academic report card. So we took this initiative of uh, synergizing Olympism and education. And on the very first page of uh, this, uh, report card, uh, the values of Olympism have been highlighted. And this goes to all the parents, this goes to more than 2.5 million parents every year. So uh, KVS is ready, sir, to do its bit as much as possible under your guidance uh, and to take India to its rightful place uh, in the world of Olympics. We have uh, presently a team of about 45,000 teachers, out of which more than 6,000 teachers uh, have been trained to conduct physical activities uh, in a structured manner and they are doing it. Uh, we have an app, uh, FitKVN app, which was launched about uh, one and a half years back where the data of all the 1.3 million students, the fitness data is captured and we have shared it with Sports Authority of India. And in fact, 
that data uh, found uh, uh, was used uh, by the sports authority of india to uh, to arrive at the fit india uh, uh, scorecard and uh, sir we have uh, decent infrastructure for sports, uh, sports state level khelo india center four places have been started with the support of sports ministry and about 100 talented uh, sporting children are right now synergizing their sports and education and their pers- uh, their quest for olympism uh, in last one year or so and uh, in kvs we have a robust sports competition uh, <laughs> annually participate and very starting competition to plus competitions to regional levels and to national levels where about at national level about 15000 children move across the country to participate in various sporting events and uh, very happy to announce sir that last year more than six medals were uh, uh, gained by kvns at the khelo india games and at the national school games more than 100 medals were gained we have uh, this size our sports portal and uh, there is a, a special program known as academic loss compensation program for the sporting children so that when they move for their sporting events their loss in academics is compensated especially when they go back to their schools uh, so sir uh, i would be uh, not going to further details and i would uh, request uh, that uh, the indian olympic association and the sports ministry uh, kvs is the lowest hanging fruit as far as uh, you have to do any of your experiments in, in taking this country and uh, its citizen to olympism and its values thank you sir thank you to uh, international olympic association and mr batra for organizing this thank you thank you santosh kumar malji uh, i think we just lost kamlesh nanavati uh, who was to deliver the word of thanks so can i request prashant khushwa to come and give give the word of thanks the minister is still with us i'm sure that the other delegates who spoke uh, uh, in this inaugural session are also there over to you prashant i am thankful to everybody i am thankful to the minister that he has given us time Mr. Kiran Reju ji for his time, Mr. Rockman, Dr. Narendra Batra, Mr. Santosh, and everybody. So Special thanks to Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, um, Neeraj ji who has coordinated all the things. 18 speakers, all of the world is with us. Means 18 country speakers will be speaking it. I hope, uh, as Minister said, we will be doing it the best and put the report to you for the Olympic Museum and other things. Again, thankful to Dr. Batra and uh, for giving us chance and to proving ourselves. Thank you, sir. Thanks for it. At 11, we are starting sharp for the. session thank you sir thank you prashant kushwaji and thank you for everybody's